Hi guys, my name is Ina Paisley. I'm an artist from Moscow, Russia and an ambassador of Zen Art Supply. Today I want to introduce you to this easy and really cute tutorial on how to make your own Christmas card using oil paints. This is what we're going to paint today. It's beautiful Christmas Christmas ornaments hanging from a Christmas tree with this beautiful bouquet light in the background. Kind of festive and warm feeling. And this is 100% made with using Zener Supplies oil and Zener Supplies brushes. It's painted on um, oil paper, which I'm going to, you know, introduce all the materials later in the tutorial. But this is basically the end result. This is what you have to end up with. And I just love the idea of painting your own cards because it's so thoughtful and it's, you know, it's a present on its own. You don't actually need to add a real present to it. You might, obviously, if you want to, but look how just cute and beautiful this is. And you can put beautiful wishes inside and also if the person really feels like it. It can just be hung on the wall like a real painting. You can really tell it apart, you know, from any real oil painting. It has all the brush strokes, the, the texture of an oil painting, and I think it's really, really cute. And for that, we're going to be using this essential palette. I thought that eight colors that are included in this palette is enough to mix all the, the colors that we need for this tutorial. And, you know, it's just... Uh, that's why it's called Essential Palette. This is all you need to make any painting, basically. Despite the fact that there's no greens included in the in this set, you will see how easily you can make your own greens using just the yellows and the blues that are included in the palette. And also there's uh, there's this red, there is a colder red and a warmer red, which is perfect for our card because we will use both. The only color that I'm going to skip in this tutorial is the ivory black, mostly because I rarely actually use black in my in my painting process. Also, I'm going to use this uh, Renoir set by Zen Art Supplies. It's basically, uh, I'm not tired of saying this, this is the perfect brush set for acrylic or oil painting, whatever you choose. Uh, it has all the basic important brushes for you to start with. This is basically like the best starting kit ever. And it even includes a little palette knife, which is really handy when you need to pre-mix some colors as I already mentioned in my previous tutorials. So hopefully you will like this tutorial. Please don't forget to comment if you have any questions. I'm here to help you and answer all of them. Also, don't forget to rate our video and put a thumbs up because that really helps us to keep motivated to create a great content for you. And also don't forget about the subscribe button because obviously there's more interesting and really useful content to come. And now without further ado, let's start. So these are the tools that are we, we're going to be using today. Uh, this is uh, the Essential Palette by Zenner Supplies that I mentioned earlier. And these are the colors, the paints that are inside. I just, you know, like to keep them all together in a separate box. So this one is empty and I got them all here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them on my little palette here. I'm using a tear off palette. You can use whatever palette you like. You can use a wooden palette or a plastic palette. Uh, I just recommend the tear off palette if you don't want to do any cleaning or commit to oil painting, you know, for a long period of time. It's just, uh, it's just easier and, and easier to maintain. And uh, uh, I think we're going to be using pretty much all the colors from this palette. Uh, we will obviously need the blues and the yellows to do all the mixes of greens for the little uh, Christmas tree that we're going to be having in the in the card. Obviously, we'll need the white and uh, two different reds, which is a warmer red and uh, a little cooler red. I suggest for this uh, Christmas card. To use uh, an oil, a piece of oil paper, you just cut it to your own liking and like size. Having here is a piece of 13 by uh, 20 centimeters, which is pretty convenient because I'm going to fold it like so and it's going to be 15 by 20, which is a good size. First, I will need to, you know, just divide my painting area. so. I want to be really neat with this because I want my card to be presentable. So I will need to be careful with my edges. Here is where I'm going to be folding my card into really slight, just a really slight 
line here and what I want to do is just you know sort of have maybe half a centimeter border white border that is going to look really nice if we just We're, go we're going to secure it with it with a washi tape so it doesn't get covered in paint and in the end you're going to end up with a cute little card with a white border it's going to look really neat right now i'm going to put some washi tape around it and also secure it on a sort of board so it just you know doesn't fling around Okay, so we're ready to be painting, but first we need to sort of, you know, draw a composition of our painting, so it's easier for us to paint. So I sort of like to plan my little Christmas ball here. Beautiful red ball. Like so. On, probably on a Christmas tree branch. There's going to be sort of like a couple other branches here and maybe another little bowl here you know just sort of make a Christmassy feel to it on the background as well also if you feel like you can't really commit to like and make a round you can just take any sort of round shape and kind of follow it, trace it, almost trace it. Also, I feel like if, you know, if the, the this bowl, the one that is right in front of us, is going to be the most, you know, it's the accent is going to be the most, um, like, this is where our attention is going to be. So if the, the rest of, the, of your little bowls are not as perfect, it really doesn't matter. It's sort of a background anyway. Okay, so I have, pretty cute bowl here so I think I'm going to be starting painting so what I want to do now is I'm going to start with a background today because I really want to show you this uh, little sort of trick that I want to use to create beautiful uh, this sort of um, you know glowy glowy effects in the background which is kind of, I think, Christmassy and so festive. So why not try to recreate this and create some mood in our card? So this is what I'm going to be doing. And for that, I'm going to use some of the reds and obviously the yellows, oranges, and and we will need green. So I'm going to be using cerulean or cobalt blue to mix some of the greens. So let's see how it works. have a little bit of... Um, solvent free uh, a little bit of odorless solvent on the side just to clean my brushes what you will also need is some toilet paper or cloth or just whatever you're not afraid to ruin with um, some paint so first off what i do is I'm going to be starting working with the background. For that, I'm going to use a bigger brush. I'm taking some of the, my mixing medium, which is, I already said, the solvent and the Dunmore varnish. And I'm going to take some of the yellows, mix them together, and maybe some of the reds, just a little bit of uh, cadmium red to create this sort of orangey look. And I'm going to put this on the paper, avoiding the balls. Sort of like so. Then I'm going to take some of the blue, which is cobalt blue, create this uh, greeny t greenish tint, and I'm going to put it down just following, you know, the pattern of of the picture that I have as a reference. I'm not trying to put a lot of uh, a lot of paint. You can see that my application is pretty watery and thin and this is because I'm trying to make this background you know just a little light because the the rest of the painting is going to be pretty textured. At least this is what I'm planning. Let's see how it goes. I'm going to add a little red here. Just sort of you know mix up the colors like so. 
just want this sort of washed out background sort of fog foggy so but whenever you paint just try to follow you know the, this vertical pattern with your strokes just because you can see the kind of the character of the strokes if you go around the balls it will sort of create this funny looking you know shape around it kind of immature and just not great so try not to do that try to be kind of bold with your strokes here and there and now what we're going to do is to try to create this bokeh effect is we're going to take a little piece of cloth or paper or whatever you're using and sort of you know try to take off the excess uh, paint that we're having here here and there it doesn't necessarily need to be perfect or follow a pattern so we just for now don't don't be alarmed that it doesn't look as white or bright as in the picture uh, we sort of need to prepare our paper to take in more of the lighter value paint so we just need to take off all the excess paint so we can sort of put you know a white uh, white paint on top um, don't also when you try to do this uh, don't try to put the I know it's sort of tempting but don't put them everywhere okay it's just here and there so now that we have our paper ready to get in some of more more of that white pigment that I'm going to put in just take a bigger brush it's just going to be easier to create this circles and take a little bit of that solvent and the mar varnish that I talked about about earlier and take a little bit of that white maybe a little too watery it needs to be a little a little watery but not too watery just a sort of you know this watercolor consistency and now place it right on top of here your little circles that you just created like so and you know the white is going to mix in with the with the residue color that is still there and it's going to be really soft create this really soft looking bouquet that we try to recreate I think it really looks great and if you want to go a little further and brighter with some of them which I do I'm going to put in a little more pigment a little more of that white Maybe somewhere going overlap, some other, you know, bouquet circles. Some could be brighter, some could be less bright. So you really are the one who are controlling this process. So now let's get to our main characters, which are the obviously the ornaments so we start to paint with I want to kind of paint from the darkest to the lightest so I'm starting with this dark red here I'm going to be using a little more of the Damar varnish but just don't use a lot just not a lot and I'm going to add maybe a little tad bit of that cerulean in here to sort of make it more violet this color and I'm going to put my darkest darks in here and this time don't be afraid to use kind of like you know be more less dangerous with your paint if I can say so just um, not so watery this time and then I'm going to use this red the warmer red mix a little bit with the alizarin crimson and you see that the texture of the paint is quite thick already here but just you know sort of the, the minimum like the medium we need the medium and I'm going to place this medium value red here
and then the brighter red, which is just the red. So we're basically creating the shape of a ball, as you can see. <laughs> and I'm going even to mix a little bit of yellow to make it even warmer. And now I'm going to be mixing in a little bit of white because it's getting to the brightest bright here. Brightest our light source. And there we go. And just kind of smooth out all these colors that you have here. But try not to contaminate a lot of the darks that you already put in because it's going to be really hard to sort of bring them back to dark. Okay. Don't forget about the reflex because the ball is supposed to have a reflex, which is the light that is um, reflected in the ball, like so. And the darkest part of the ball is supposed to be here. So whenever you do that, you can see that your ball is completely round which is great news. So you can add even like more white to sort of show that it's a little glossy and sparkly. Like so. And if you want, you can even take a clean brush I'm going to be using this badger brush and you can go ahead and smooth the outside of your ball a little bit with the background so it doesn't look so, you know, sharp. The edges don't look so sharp. But be really careful here. It's really easy to mess up. So just like so. The, the brush is completely dry and clean. This is important. So you kind of smooth out the, the outside edges. It kind of creates this softer look and the ball is immediately more, you know, belonging to the background that it sits in. So it's a little trick to just kind of put your, uh, your object in the background. And we're going to be using a lot of this smudging uh, technique on the other balls that we have here. But first I want to fix a little bit of this background so it doesn't look so muddy. Okay, like so. Okay, now let's create the other two of our ornaments. to be taking more of that red but this oh sorry it's not good but this time I want to for it to be a little lighter because I don't want it to be certainly don't want it to be more brighter than the one that's already in the foreground so I'm going to just fill this in like so and then take a little bit of the darks and really, you know, just sort of give it a feeling of being round, but without getting into so much work as this one. So it, like the less work you put in something, the better it looks in the background because it kind of doesn't, you know, get forward before the main subject that you have. So this way it looks a little less, you know, detailed and uh, demands less attention which is good because we don't want all our objects to be requesting attention in the painting it sort of leaves us with a bad painting i'm going to take a, uh, again a clean brush and smudge this but this time i want it even to be even more smudged so it's sort of out of focus you know how sometimes the 
the objects in the background are not as sharp as the ones in the foreground. So this is what we'll want to do with this bowl. Kind of smudge the outside. And the, the oils are a perfect tool for that because they're so easy to work with and so easy to create all this beautiful, you know, soft edges and easy to move around. I really love painting with oils uh, because of that. And just a little one over here, but this one I even want to make even more or even less bright. This one is sort of almost watered down, like yellow, uh, reddish, like pinkish color. And I'm going to blend that one even more. See, like so. Maybe just a little bit of the darks just to sort of show it's still a ball. Okay. This small thing here. Maybe take a smaller brush for that. I'm going to take a smaller brush, this one, for this. And I'm creating this greenish color, which is supposed to be, because it is golden, we need this sort of greenish color to show the, the the shadow of the gold here because if you look at the golden anything it sort of looks a little greenish in the shadows and then i'm going to add this brighter yellow just going to indicate the light like so. And then don't forget the little sort of light in here. All these details are all kind of contributing to your objects looking believable. You might think that it's a small detail and you can just ignore it, but in the end, this is what's going to make it look legit. And I'm going to add some even darker. Yeah. And even a little more brighter whites here to show that it's glowing. Okay, perfect. Uh, sort of the same thing here, but just not as, you know, forward looking. Not as much details. we need to create um, a Christmas tree because right now they're looking like they're hanging in the air and for that I'm going to mix a little bit of that yellow and cerulean and we're going to create this beautiful vivid green you see how easily you can mix the grains from just yellows and blues and I'm going to take the cobalt and all the yellows that I have in here and create this darker green. So this is what we're going to be using for for the tree. The darker green and the lighter green. I'm going to water this down. It's supposed to be pretty, I wouldn't say watery, but pretty flexible, smooth, you know. But just not too much. This is this is what you want. See? Pretty soft, but not too much. 
Now I'm going to take some of that color, green, mix it with a little bit of the reds and the blues and create this sort of tree color, I guess? Maybe a little bit of this, you know, sort of brownish color for the Christmas tree trunk. And what I'm going to do is kind of create this branch here. Don't forget to use a lot of color because some of the background color is going to mix in here, but it's it doesn't really matter because you know it's sort of the the beauty of the oil paint because all the colors are interfering with it with each other and this is what helps you create this smooth beautiful look. One's in here. So this is the base for our little green green needles. Wash your brush and then with the same round badger brush I'm taking the, the greens and I'm kind of starting to create these needles. And it's really easy, you just put them here and there like so. Some of the colors are going to mix in but it doesn't matter, it's okay, just don't pay such attention to it, just go with the flow. Like so. Maybe a little more green if you want. Maybe even a little bit in the background, so it's kind of, you know, there's a tree there, but we don't necessarily focus on it. So like this, and then I'm taking the brighter green and just add a little bit of light to this, you know, areas that I want to bring forward in this branch, for example, because this is the focus of my painting. Like I'm not going to probably touch these ones, but here I just want to add a little bit of interest, just make it stand out. So this is what I'm going to do, like so. Maybe a couple here, and just a couple here around my main character. Okay, and let's not forget the little string. And for that, I'm going to be using the smallest brush that I have in my in my set is this one, which is a Badger Mix number zero. I'm just taking this dark color, sort of creating this frame and it's attached to like so don't really need to be neat, neat with this just sort of give it a, an idea of it being attached to the tree and of course go ahead and don't forget to sign your name because this will make it look like a true painting we're done this is how quickly you can create a really you know exclusive piece of work a beautiful Christmas card just in time for the holiday season. 
just please don't forget to dry this completely this will need to dry at least for a week so it doesn't smudge anywhere and also it's your choice if you want to varnish it and make it look glossy for that you can just use any gloss you know finishing varnish for oils that you can find in the stores uh, also you can just leave it at that and not varnish which is also fine just be sure to dry it completely before you give this to anyone <laughs> tip for you guys when you will try to bend this paper it will definitely uh, be a problem so for you not to ruin your beautiful card just put uh, a little make a, a little sort of cut on the the line where it's supposed to bend just really really lightly touching with your knife you need to cut it halfway through the paper like not all the way through just this way it will be so much easier for you to bend this paper at the exact precise place where you need it to bend see so this way you will uh, avoid uh, you know, just uh, spoiling your card and uh, it will look beautiful. For now, I cannot really bend it properly because I'm going to sponge the painting, but you get the idea, right? It's going to look really nice. Well, thank you for watching this tutorial. Hopefully you like it and have a very, very Merry Christmas. Bye.